スタンダードバンガー How's it going my fellow v a n g u a r d s e a n a f a i r c a r d by Calgary and I am sleep delirious right now <laughs> I don't know how I survived the day with like four hours of sleep but Here we are. We made top two. So. We made top two. With little sleep. With little sleep. <laughs> That's right. the strat. That's the strat. So, uh, I'm going to be sharing with you guys my deck profile that I've played.、Um, I actually already have this profile on the channel, but, you know,、uh, it's going to have a tournament report attached to it. So,、uh, without further ado, let's begin. So, I played Green Nature this time around.、Um, So, obviously, the starter, as with most clans, is the on red draw, because there's nothing else you can play.、Uh, for triggers, I played the full rainbow with four crits, four stand. That's not a stand. That's not a stand, that's a front. <laughs> George? I'm just like delirious.、Uh, four draw, and then the four heal. So, I went with the full rainbow. Just because、um, it adds a certain amount of、uh, like, unpredictability.、Um, if you're playing with like, the typical 8 crit, 4 draw,、um, which you know, is pretty much standard across like, the board,、uh, your opponent can easily just be like, can redirect damage towards certain things or they can、uh, you know, put it into their favor. But when it comes to like, having the stand and the, and the crit, it.、Um, It makes it difficult for them to like, you know, really manage their hand.、Uh, also, front triggers with the amount of cards that you pump out of the board, it's just, it, it's always,、um, it steals games. Like, one of my matches today, I only won because I hit a stand trigger.、Oh, I keep saying stand. Front trigger,、uh, and it made everything just really big. Man wants stand triggers back. Please, Bushy. <laughs> No, I just want, I want to play premium. <laughs>、um, and if you're wondering why I'm playing two different art, two reasons.、Uh, the big one is that if they see two different artworks, they're going to be assuming that I'm playing, like, they might assume that I'm playing, like, four of of each. And also just because I like writing out names and I like different artworks. And that's, that's, I'm weird. <laughs> I, I do the same thing. That's、yeah. why I run multiple、okay. different. That's the zeros.、Uh, the gray one level was super easy. We're playing the best. Ride chain、yeah. in the entire game. <laughs> Hamske.、Uh, so, Pencil Squire.、Uh, continuous of your Vanguard is the Grade 3 Hamske. He becomes a 12k. And then at the end of the turn, you push him into Soul. So, Soul plus one, push him into Soul. Search for the Grade 2.、Uh, he adds consistency to your rides. He also is just helpful with filtering. And it's just overall a very good card. It's also a 12k beater if you're on the Grade 3 Hamske, which is what you should be on. Uh, the next card is the real MVP of the deck is、um, Tank Mouse. Basically, every.、Uh, in this deck, I allocated every single Counter Blast to draw, adding cards into my hand one way or another. And with Tank Mouse,、um, when you mill a card,、uh, you may pay a Counter Blast to take that card you milled and put it back into your hand、uh, once per Tank Mouse. And、um, the fact, first of all, the fact that it changed the once per. Turn roll, this is you know really helpful. <laughs> so you can like choose what you want, and not only that, um, with uh, what Tank Mouse is, you can also damage the knight if you end up riding it. Um, oddly enough, you don't actually want to ride your grade one half skates all that much, uh, because if you go second, you can um, use it to rush and whatnot. I, I like did it almost every game I played today, uh, so. And then Tank Mouse is always the card behind my Vanguard to enable to hit my Vanguard hit 18.、Um, so, yeah, Tank Mouse is the true MVP of the deck. And then the last grade one, and I'm playing exactly 12 grade ones, is another four of, of Monoculus Tiger.、Uh, really, I don't use Monoculus Tiger as often as I'd like.、Um, for those of you who don't know what it does, when it boosts or it attacks on the Vanguard or the Rear Guard,、uh, you mill a card. If it's a normal unit, your opponent can use Sentinels to block that attack. And if it's a trigger unit,、uh, your opponent can only use triggers to guard that attack.、Um, it can only boost the rear guard, so it can't put it behind the vanguard. I wish you could do that, it would make Leopold a lot stronger, but if they did that, then you know, it'd be kind of broken in standard, right? If you can, re if you can redirect or、uh, guard restrict, in no sense,、uh, Leopold's a crit, right? So.、Uh, A lot of the times I use this if I don't have enough、uh, counter blasts to facilitate 
uh, binoculars and tank mouse. So sometimes I would mill with the binoculars first to see if I want to use the counterblast to add the card that's milled for f essentially free. Because um, the only cards that matter in the soul are the grade 1 and 2 Hamscape. Um, and there are also games where if this is in the Excel circle and my opponent's like at 5 damage, it's just, you know, it can steal games. So, yeah, <clears throat> that's the very one lineup. On to the grade 2s. So we're playing 4 copies of our boy Pencil Knight Hamsuke. Uh, he doesn't really do much other than if there's the grade 3 Hamsuke in your manga circle, he's a 12k uh, attacker as well. And, um... Hold on. Oh, it's 12k forever. Oh, I just realized that. It's continuous. Oh, my god. I just realized something. I'm only one of had an epiphany during a deck <laughs> profile. <laughs> it's continuous. Oh, my god. That was during your turn. What? <laughs> it's during your... Yeah. It's continuous 12k if you're back or Yeah. Oof. People have been attacking Dine into Dine into it. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> All right, so lesson learned. Read your cards. <laughs> Everyone, Harding read your read. cards. <laughs> <Harding. Yeah>. Oh <laughs> my god. <laughs> I just learned this right now. <laughs> hey, so this is a 12k <laughs> bot if your Vanguard is the Great Diabsky. And if you have the Grade 1 and so it swings for 14. Um, this card got so much better. <laughs> just like... Right there. I should have won more of my games. <laughs> <laughs> Easier. He would attack it to have scared of me. Nine to nine. What's wrong with me? I don't need to explain that card anymore. <laughs> uh, uh, the next card is a card I want to see early on. Uh, is Binoculus Tiger. Uh, <laughs> uh, Vanguard Rearguard. When it swings, you make Counter Boss 1. And it's basically the same thing. Almost the same thing as Binoculus, except if you hit a normal unit, you draw a card. And if you hit a trigger unit, you retire a uh, card of your opponent's side of the field, and then you give three units in the front row five. Um, well, 5k. And uh, this thing comes in clutch a lot of the times, especially if I've been filtering out a lot and the probability of me hitting triggers is really high. So, I've also stolen a ton of my games today using the binoculars. Like, I'm pretty sure you're, there are games where these guys would glance over, and then suddenly my three pandas are 32 <laughs> for no reason, and this is coming in and speaking of the pandas of course is the strongest cuddly bear in the entire world the card is so nuts so it, it's a uh, geograph giant it's simple skill continuous if it's on an additional rear guard it gets plus 8k so it's inherently 17 so it swings for 27 I, like unlike this thing <laughs> people don't realize like I had so many people today that attack into the Geograph Giant 9 to 9, and it's like, cool. So, like, I. Thanks for wasting an attack. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and it's like, you can't take it back. It's regionals. So, yeah. it's in, If it's on the XL circle, it's inherently 17. Forever and always. It's a typical target for. Um, people to use these retired skills, Times. which which I encourage because it's you're wasting your resources on a card that doesn't really matter. Um, like,. It doesn't matter if it snowballs, but yeah. Basically, just wasting the resources. Yeah, the beats. Raining the resources, making them use, waste their attacks on this, and it also helps funnel attacks into my Vanguard because I want I don't have a counter charge engine in this either. So, I mean, not that I won't really want it, but because this deck plays with zero damage for the most part. Again, all my counter blasts is allocated to drawing. So, there you go. Uh, next is our big boy. Hamske, he makes uh, Pencil Hero Hamske, he makes the deck worth uh, going through the effort of getting that right chain. Um, when placed in Vanguard, if you have the 1 and 2 in the soul, you may discard 2 cards from your hand, and you may search your deck for a... Uh, uh, you may acquire a second Excel Circle, and then you may search your deck for a Grade 1 Hamske and a Grade 2 Hamske, and you call them to your board. And uh, that's pretty much it. Otherwise, it's just kind of useless. Um, as long as you see your grade two at any uh, when you're riding up, uh, as long as you get that grade one at any point in the game, he becomes live. Uh, it's pretty devastating when, like mid game, you just drop a hamske, call two more, uh, get two more excel circles, and you fill them up. Uh, it catches a lot of people off guard most of the time. Uh, also, 
there there have been opportunities where I just draw my pandas and then I get the two XL circles, call a full column that's swinging 24, and I just drop two pandas and then my opponent's just like, well, I lose. So, uh, the, the main thing that about this deck is Hamske. Hamske is way too good, despite what certain people say. So, yeah. And then... Uh, a really good card, which is worthy of the VR, is Skull Hunter Leopold. Uh, truth be told, when I first saw Leopold, I thought it was garbage. <laughs> but then I saw Tank Mouse, and I'm like, oh, just kidding, I like him. Uh, so, uh, Leopold's skill, when he uh, continues, if he's placed in the Vanguard on top of a grade 3, you may activate his auto ability twice. Uh, so, interesting, if you break ride, you can actually use his break ride skill twice. Um, so... Is that uh, his skill is uh, when placed on Vanguard, you may mill the top card. If it's a normal unit, you get to check the top four cards and call grade two or less units to the board. And then if it's a trigger unit, you get 15k to crit. Uh, the 15k to crit is more useful, of course, later on in the game, forcing your opponent to you know drop more cards. But of course, you know it is what it is. It's all RNG, and um, yeah, he's really helpful with filling up your board without having to commit from hand. Uh, a lot. I, uh, when I see a lot of people play Leopold, especially like near like the late game where, you know, they have to do or die. I see people hesitate ch calling their triggers, which doesn't make sense because you want as many attacks as possible. Every extra attack is basically an extra critical trigger in my opinion. So if you can push out as many minimum pokes to your opponent's vanguard, because with standard, no one really plays 5k shields anymore. And all the 5k shields in the game are grade 2s, and grade 2s are combo pieces. So no one wants to give up their grade 2s, like, ever. And if you're making them have to drop 10k's for 5k shields, then you're just ultimately winning in that sense. And then the last card in my deck that is uh, different mine from the person who won Worlds is uh, Bison. Um, so those who don't know, Bison, Vanguard, Rearguard, if you... Uh, when this attacks, you may counter boss one, choose one of your rear guards, and it gets 5k power. And if this unit happens to be on the vanguard circle, uh, you may stand up that rear guard. Uh, the reason why I play this instead of the Silvest Wolf, I believe that's what the world champion played, uh, is because if you drop him late game, he just helps out. Like, it's a good card. Uh, but the thing about Bison is that you never want to be on him more than one turn. You always want to be. You always want to be constantly riding. Like, of course, chaining Leopold is good. Even going to Hamske is good. But the turn that you go into Bison is pretty devastating because you essentially recycle an Excel circle. Um, I do understand people who want to play the four Bison and then allocate all their counter blasting into restanding. But the issue is, is that um, you're prone to being damage denied. And uh, with how the, how the deck currently build, uh, as I mentioned before, all my counter bass is allocated to drawing. So if they're ca damage denying me, then I'm not using cards in my hand to you know really do anything. So being able to play with with zero damage is really good. Plus, like I, I've uh, pretty baited my opponents, like a lot of my opponents today, especially uh, where if they like if they attacked my vanguard they figured they would lose because they knew like cards like binoculars higher and stuff like that existed but um again like every excel circle to me is an extra critical in my mind so that's why i don't have a problem uh you know playing with zero damage and the bison is honestly just a bait uh if i go into a lot of the times i'm discarding bison for uh hamskies anyway um if i do play the bison then i am intending to win with it so that's pretty much it. And that's the end of the deck profile. So with the tournament reports, uh, hopefully I remember everything. So <clears throat> round one, uh, I played against Orville Think Tank. Uh, this particular player played, the way he plays it, it just seemed like the cards just can't come to him when he needs it. Uh, for the round one, I, I was able to pull off the Hamske, well, I, I should preference every single game I play today. I pulled off the Hanske right chain. Like it just, it, it happened every time. Uh, but with him for some reason, because I went second, so I was able to uh, ride into Monoculus Tiger, and then I called the the Grade One Hanske. I got two damage off on him, and I was able to search for the Grade Two. And then uh, I, and then the next turn in Grade One, 
Uh, he, he crit me, so I went to two damage. Then I rode, the next time I rode the Hamske and I called two Binoculus Tigers. And my Binoculus Tigers drew me a card each, so that turned a plus three. Uh, which is really good. Uh, and I pushed him to, I think, three or four at that point. And then he goes into CEO Amaterasu. Uh, calls in a regret CEO. And then he just checks and he attacks. Uh, he crits and he pushes with me to four. And then I got a damage trigger, I believe, at that point. And then I go into the Hapsky right chain and I push him to five. But the thing was is that because he was able... Uh, t two of his damage triggers are draws. And those draws enable him to basically draw all his combo pieces. And he rides into Imperial Daughter and goes to Deer and I lose because I discarded cards for the Hapskies. Um So I lost round one, which sucked. <laughs> it never feels good losing round one. But it's a team event, so it's okay. Uh, round two, I played against a kid playing the Deleter Child deck. Uh, I knew it was the Deleter Child deck because it had PGs, grade one PGs. Uh, the game lasted three turns longer than it should have because he kept healing. <laughs> like, a uh, Vanguard would attack, heal. Great. <laughs> so that was pretty insignificant. Oh, pretty non memorable. Nothing really happened. He deleted my Vanguard every turn, I guess. Uh, round three was against was it, uh, Narukami. Um, the, the reason why I won was uh, the during the beginning, I didn't call any regards for him to start binding. Um, and then what he rolled into uh, Stinger, Stinger first, and he didn't bind any of my regards. I guess he was trying to conserve uh, Chiroblast, or maybe because I only had one card on the board anyway. Um, and then I kept doing my thing, going to Hamske. And the moment I rode, uh, got into Hamske, he lost because he couldn't wipe my board at that point. Uh, because my hand was like well conserved. I took like, he took check no triggers. And when I rode into three, I only had two damage. Um, so I got the Hamske off, and I called like two more cards on the board. So if he wanted to detox me, he would have to drop three cards. And he used up all of his counter blasts, just clearing out like... Because I called uh, a tr uh, front trigger my first XL Circle, so I uh, did all that. And yeah, I just basically forced him... Like, I basically forced him to like, if he wants to restand with a tonic, he has to discard at least two cards, making his... Uh, <coughs> Banger like minus one, so uh, that's how I ended up winning uh, with this one. Uh, round four was in Shadow Paladin, which is the matchup with uh, Aiden's team, and um, we ended up losing this round as our only loss as a team. Uh, I was up against Shadow Paladin, uh, which is my worst matchup because I am an Excel clan, and uh, Shadow Paladin is just you know devastate your board. Uh, we both played super carefully. I tried to make sure that my, um, like, early to mid game, I was calling, like, two cards minimum so that he, if he was wanted to retire me at, at any point, he would have to um, overextend a bit, right? And then what, what ended up having me lose was that he doubled Phantom Blastered me. I wasn't aware, like, I think, I think I was aware at the time that Phantom Blaster Dragon was not a once per turn. Uh, which now that I think about it makes sense because the cost is so big. But I ended up losing because he swung at me for 70-ish K. At my Vanguard, I didn't have the PG. Oh, I also, this game also triple damage check draws. So I lost three of my PGs. And I had used the uh, PG the turn earlier. And that's why my opponent was able to double Phantom Blaster Dragon me. So that's what happened. Uh, round five was the matchup against uh, my team, my rival team, the other half of the Jedi Council, as we call them, uh, Sean and Hui. Um, I was up against Kevin, and we and I played uh, his Gear Chronicle. It was kind of unfortunate because I think he went into the standard not really wanting to do. I mean, wanting to have fun. That's why he played Gears, and he just expected Sean and Hui to carry him, but. Uh, yeah, he apparently he wasn't doing very well this standard event, and um, as gears, uh, 
pretty he couldn't do much anything significant uh he if he wanted to idealize at any point he would have won but he didn't because he valued the mystery players triple drive which i understand this puts more cards in that but idealize allows you to call a board and that's what the thing that was killing him because he couldn't amass a board at all so uh round five was a pretty pretty fast win and then round six, I was up against uh, last round of Swiss was against Oracle Think Tank. Um, this one I doubled, like it was so bad. I knew he was going uh, uh, for the final turn of my opponent. He checked the top two cards, drew a card, and then he put a crit on top. And I was assuming he was either bluffing that he was going to get the second trigger. So, and I knew one of them was a crit. So if if the second one wasn't a crit, um. I would, uh, I would have been, f well, I mean, either way, if it was a crit, I couldn't block it anyway, so I wanted, I just called his bluff and made it two to pass, and, um, because I made it two to pass, his Imperial Daughter was able to deal me three damage, right, yeah, plus one crit, that me three damage, and I was at, uh, two, two or three, yeah, three. And my, he was at um, three damage as well. So, and I basically double healed him. <laughs> and then I went heal, heal into, uh, I think, a tank mouse. And my banger was at 32. And his rear guards couldn't hit me. And because of that, I rode Leopold and I switched the win. So, I was pretty nutty. I, I, in the vlog, I talk about how I had to mention the double heal, which is pretty insane i'm pretty sure josh was like what the fuck oh uh, yeah because i saw it like at the last second yeah. <laughs> uh and then we proceeded to our top eight matches um round one i was up against uh, royals uh this was actually the guy who um tarned me during um singles last last event in autumn and um uh it was basic royal paladin uh, I tried to make sure that he, he rode into King of Knights instead of Monarch, which I'm very grateful for. He didn't go into Monarch at any point. And um, uh, basically, I ignored his Blaster Blade mid game. And then for the late game, I used it as a leverage to make him discard cards. Uh, and what happened was, I, I, rode the, I did the Hamskate Ride Chain. And then my entire board had Hamskays on it. My, I remember my board clearly. It was Hamskay in the Vanguard, Hams, a grade 3 Hamskay in the Vanguard, Binoculus, grade 1 Hamskay. And then I had three XL Circles, because I did Leopold this the first time. And um, it was... And it came down to... Like, I used the the vanilla... The, the, the rear guard Hamskay to attack the Blasty Blade. And either... He defended it using a card from hand, or he let it die. He ended up letting the blaster blade die. I knew he struggled if he wanted to keep it or not, because he took like a couple seconds to think about it. So, uh, if that's a sign to me that he his hand was really bad and he didn't have a follow play, he didn't go through it. So he let it die, and then I went to pass his vanguard, and this is like my favorite tactic ever because. Um, being one to pass in a format like standard it's actually quite threatening because if it misses then your opponent wastes a lot of shield like i mentioned before there's not a lot of five there's no 5k shields like no one no one really has 5k shields anymore and they're all grade twos so and if i check the trigger it's 10k so meaning that if he wants to block it he has to drop a 15k shield which is a lot of damage it's or a lot of shield especially if it's one to pass so there's just throwing away cards at that point and the card that i checked was a front trigger so all my rear guards were swinging 33 plus and um the icing on the cake would have been if my binoculars hit a trigger as well but either way my opponent just couldn't handle 33k hamskays 32k hamskays so that was round one which we swept as a team uh round two of top was against oracle think tank again um Oh man, this one was kind of unmemorable because I think I just walloped him. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, it was unmemorable because his hand was only at like four at any given point because he kept calling his rear guards for some reason and I just 
control the game by attacking his rear guards. And, yeah, the rush was just too much, and he didn't have any follow-up. I think he only rode Imperial once, and then he couldn't ride again, even though he had other great threes. And, yeah, so that was just unfortunate. I think he called it uh, a deer as well. Um, but it didn't do anything. <laughs> and then for f the last match of the entire event, uh, we faced the our round one guys. And going into this, I won the dice roll, so I had the advantage. But I had to Jesus into the Hamske, and because uh, Hamske Grade Three, excuse me. And because I had to do that, uh, I had an ultimatum of either getting rid of a perfect guard or a shield. I ended up going, ending up keeping a perfect guard. And because of that, uh, in the final turn, I was 5k short. I could have had a chance to uh, saving myself if, because I had two binoculars on the field. And if the binoculars were actually able to allow me to draw shield value, I would have won. Because I would have uh, been able to call four cards with uh, Leopold after that, potentially. But it is what it is. And uh, we ended up getting second overall. And uh, had a really good time. Oh, and I think these guys had a great time too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> pretty damn proud. So. Um, in terms of where the deck is now, I feel like the only card I would really sort of change is Monoculus and the Bison. Um, as much as I enjoy Monoculus and how cheesy it is, I feel like it's it's too like niche for where everything is right now. I guess. Uh, a lot of the times, my damage trigger is going to um, really affect how it is. Uh, if and with the advent of uh, XL two, um, making uh, with all my uh, triggers essentially not helping me like get to the what I need. Like I, I don't really need to be. Not that I don't need to be drawing all this much, but it's nice to have um, more consistent power. I feel. Uh, if the uh, uh, the only way for Great Nature to change is if they completely scrap their current idea of what it is, I think the des uh, Bushiro designed a uh, standard Great Nature, at least if you're playing Hamske, to um, try to like push out as fast as you can. Because if you're playing just pure Leopold, uh, it's all about building numbers, and I understand why people play it that way, um, but. Being able to pump out a board for like oh, literally almost nothing, I feel, is more important. And the XL2 helps uh, facilitate that, but you're sacrificing quite a bit of power to, for the extra draw. So, and uh, not that I've ever experienced deck out with this because of how like it's just so fast. But I feel like fear that um, with XL2, if I use it incorrectly, I'm going to experience a lot of deck up moments, but that's pretty much my thoughts about it in my delirious, sleepy state. That I'm in. <laughs> and uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I gotta say, uh, being the first wave of videos that, we're, that I'm putting out, coming back into this, uh, I really hope you guys enjoy it. And I hope to continue making more content for you guys. So if you guys do enjoy it, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, share this with someone you can think of to enjoy it. Um, and hit those bells if you want instant notification when I upload. And as always, my fellow bangers, be sure to stand up to the gadget and I'll see you next time. Bye.